is clever. Kids can take the paper that's laid out here and use these design examples or templates and create their own model plane. Imagine a display device. The bane of travelers. One of the great industries of the sea between here and other countries in the Baltic. You get a sense when you're looking at this over time of the uh, culture of the Baltic, the sea culture, if you will. Fishing, car ferries, cruise ships, with Trump putting tariffs on European products and others, just makes you realize that industries that we're looking at here today, tourism, perhaps, in some way, definitely shipping will be affected. I don't think these were one of the spectacular schooner ships, but maybe they were. I don't think they're large enough. As you can imagine, the day when harbors were filled up with innumerable numbers of ships like this, and the men that knew how to sail them, and for Herman Melville and all the others who rode about the sea, because otherwise, out of that huge industry over time, we wouldn't know that much about the, its intimacy. Various kinds of torpedoes, <laughs> Jesus. Imagine some guy lying in bed saying, I can come up with a better way to kill. I can, I can. What about it, but a little car that went on tracks for carrying these mines. And after walking, through the length of this thing on the inside which may not be the full length it's hard to get a grasp of its dimension mention the new ones don't know what it is a remote control unit for naval fortress mines picture seems to imply you could sit remotely on shore and when a ship got in a certain place whether it detonated or not you could Consider the design sophistication of a device that would hold this mine, move it about, and then eject it into the... To imagine the young people that would come to a museum like this, as they would go into a space museum and get inspired to, for some reason, want to spend the rest of their life working on the sea. Some of the earliest watercraft, flat-bottomed plank boats. Imagine that some of the boats that were quickly built on the first big lake towards the Yukon. Closer look at this ship, it's a big boat. You'll get tired of hearing me say it, but imagine what the men who built this boat, who carved that timber and trimmed it out and helped install it in place, would think after all this time and its history of being buried, I'm sure, in the sea, to find it resurrected for posterity. Own he leaves more behind than I will. Here are some of the cross-section drawings on the submarine. If you were knowledgeable or spent any time on submarines, this would be interesting. Even for me, looking at this, this torpedo room, I can recall some of what we saw. But this, when you see terms like battery vent supply, you realize that, in fact, a submarine is a small, tiny civilization living inside of an alien environment. And so, like the human body, it somehow has to have the resources it needs, like air and water, pure water, but it has to be able to vent out what it no longer needs, the bad air, the excrement, literally. There in the distance, the Seaplane Museum, the waterfront beyond those buildings. <clears throat> Some industrial works, it looks like. And now we're in this large park, which I think hooks way around to the left. So we'll hook around to the left, and then we'll start zigzagging our way to 
directly back to Old Town to see if we can see buildings we haven't already seen. Too many dogs that I've seen in these countries, but when I see them, exception of two, they're always on a leash. Although it was a right angle jog in the bottom portion, the southeast portion of this park, that was it. This is a seemingly cemetery-like monument, but other than a few words on it, I don't know what it is for. A little more insight into the construction of these buildings. You may remember a building we looked at the other day that was all this big log and I thought, well, that's so novel. It's really not. Apparently, everything was built with large size timber. Then, with this lathing on it, uh, they installed slats over the top. I assume that was the beginning, the original construction concept. The street I'm walking down and that part of the that side of the block and probably a third side of the block it's not on a main street were all built with these homes in the past for the fishmongers or the fishermen who came to this area in droves once the railroad was completed between Tallinn and St. Petersburg and thereby huge amounts of fish could be processed here and shipped up there or vice versa, I'm not sure. Benefits of these buildings is that they had in the inner center of the block were large, huge backyards for each property. They weren't huge, but they were big enough to have individual houses on the third side of this block. So as you got inside of each block uh, on the sides, you had larger uh, backyards on and on, block after block, so you can imagine what an explosion economically and in population all of this represented. A bigger kind of a such building. Imagine it for realtors, construction companies, and investors. This was an explosive gold mine, period. Any innovation like that little balcony type thing uh, was enough to excite a little bit more rent or higher occupancy. That looks like it had a fire, doesn't it? This rock facing may well have been a style also that the lower part was rock and decorative. Sometimes that's been covered up now with stucco. I also mean, I'm just guessing, that Tallinn could avoid <clears throat> the huge communist brutal residential architectural monstrosity buildings we see elsewhere some of these buildings were pretty darn sizable now may not have been totally residential walk down this driveway just to see what's in the back here this is that some developers went for greater density smaller backyards and this may reflect that where they jammed them in a whole lot more so. More detail on this building than we've seen. Restored in a newer style. Imagine that for some owners or if they were a person was able to buy an old one of these, it created a brand new opportunity for uh, profit and investment. Full block uh, pretty much restored, at least on the right side. Left side, not so much. Now, this restored building has some more interesting balconies and so forth. You can see we're approaching Old Town. Just panning and telephotoing down this street, you can see that there's a building under. I think this is the spoon I'm trying to reach. Outer defense system. That's the, the great coastal gate and its bastion tower. And this, I believe, is that defensive bastion feature that I wanted to investigate.